Good morning, party people. I am coming to you just north of the Arctic Circle. Dag nabbit, I forgot. I was going to look at the name of the city that we're uh, sailing to, uh, and I've already forgotten. There's all kinds of things that I have to remember at the start of each office hours. I have to hit a certain button on my phone. I have to set up my microphone a certain way, and sure enough, I've already forgotten the city uh, that, I, that we're going to. Uh, so let's go take a look. Oh, you'll notice that, uh, of course, that there's not a lot of snow or ice. This is different from like my Iceland trips up near the Arctic Circle there. Part of that is the function of the time of year that we're in. This is early September when I'm recording this, uh, 2023. Uh, and then the other part of it is that this just isn't as wintry as those upper reaches of Iceland and Greenland. Um, I, I almost don't need this jacket right now. It's like right on the edge. Although if the wind hits, then I uh, totally need it. So let's see your top voted question. Your top voted question is from the Everyday DBA who asks, does it matter what column you implement table partitioning on for a very large table? Yes, absolutely. Just like when you design the clustered indexes on a table, when you design clustered indexes on a table, it's very important to pick which column goes first. So I teach you how to do that in my mastering index tuning class. And then I also go into more details in my fundamentals of column store class. I mentioned column store because usually by the time you get to 28 billion rows, you probably want to be thinking about column store. I'm not saying that it's the answer, but it's something that you definitely want to be thinking about. Next up, let's see here. Ollie the DBA asks, in your previous iterations where you worked as a frontline DBA, did you ever regret becoming a DBA? Every position has its uh, pros and cons and its compromises. The one thing that I did re didn't like, I mean, there are lots of things you don't like about a job, but one thing that really got to me was the on-call portion. In most shops, there aren't that many database administrators. There are relatively few. Uh, and so as a result, especially with DBA standing for uh, don't bother or default blame acceptor, um, you end up getting dragged into every on-call issue. So I, I remember that the biggest thing that I was happy about when I switched from database administration to consulting was the ability to not have to carry a company phone 24-7. Uh, that was a, a big, huge deal. Next up, let's see here. Pete asks, my statistics on a huge table are horrible. How can I update statistics on the latest 10% of the table where the majority of searches take place? You can't do that with just one table, but you can do that with partitioned views, not partition tables, partitioned views. Partitioned views are a technique that's been around since beyond uh, more than 20 years now. And uh, it's, they're relatively easy to do. They work with standard edition. Search for partitioned views. And then that way, for example, you can break tables or break a table up into date ranges. And you can have a table for old data, a table for you know, 2022, 2023, and so forth. And then only update stats on specific tables. All kinds of cool advantages with those. Next up, Jessica asks, Hi Brent, I recently had a logical consistency based error for incorrect checksums. Check DB return no errors on any database on the server. Is it possible to have false positives for error 824? Yes, they're typically SQL server bugs. Every now and then you'll see that in cumulative updates. So first off, make sure that you're patched to the most recent cumulative update. And then second, if you're still having it and it's reproducible, call Microsoft and open a support case because you've found a bug. I, it, it is possible also that your I.O. subsystem is throwing errors at random times, but I would bet, because I've seen so many of those CUs addressing 
uh, consistency errors that I bet it's a CU issue. Next up, Hanny says, uh, my company is asking for a receipt or invoice. Hold on a second here. I got to click a button so this gets captured. Do, 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 do. There we go. Hanny asks, hi Brent, my company is asking for an invoice for a class as they don't accept online payments per company policy. How do I achieve that? In order to keep costs down, the only way that I sell classes is online. It's kind of like being involved with Amazon.com and saying, hey Amazon, can I buy something and just like pay you later? Nah, it's not really how Amazon works until you get to a certain purchase threshold. I do the same thing. If you buy 10 or more of the same course, then we'll uh, have a discussion and invoice you, but until you're, j when you're just buying one or two courses, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to buy online. Next up, Maurice asks, I took your mastering class, but I don't remember the answer to this. He says, my friend says that if I have queries that sometimes query column A and sometimes A and B, that I should have two indexes. If I have one index on A and B, it has to read more data. Is that true or false? I gotta put the phone in my pocket in order to cover this one. So imagine the phone book. You remember the good old white pages of the phone book that were based on last name, first name, and middle initial. Well, if you wanted to find all the people named Brent Ozar and you knew both my first and last name, what are you going to do? You're going to seek to Ozar, then seek to Brent, and you'll find the row that you're looking for, and you're out of there. What if you want to find all the people named Ozar because you don't remember my first name? Well, the good news is, is there's not a lot. You're going to turn to Ozar in the phone book and you're going to read through me and only a couple of my relatives and get the answers that you need. You're not going to have to read a lot more data in the phone book as long as you're searching for something relatively unique. What if you say, I want to find all the people with a last name of Smith? Well, there's going to be a lot of them. And you're going to read more pages because you're also including their first names. But I would argue that you should hone your search criteria. If you're looking for the thousands of Smiths or tens of thousands of Smiths who live in a big city like LA or New York City, of course your reads are going to take a while. And frankly, I'm not going to optimize for that. I'm not going to build a separate index just because you want to bring back 10,000 or 50,000 rows at a time. If you're only bringing back a selective number of rows though, doesn't really matter how many columns are in the index. Next up, let's see, Izzy G asks, hold on a second, I got to do the thing again because I put my phone to sleep. Um, Izzy G asks, Izzy G asks, when we're running SP Who is Active, sometimes we see a query, but the query plan column is null. What are the common causes for this scenario? I, I, I hit this from clients all the time, and so I've even got a short code link for it. Go to brentozar.com slash go slash no plans. brentozar.com slash go slash no plans. And we've got a written up answer on there as to why that is. It involves the results from a specific DMV. Uh, next up, Ozan asks, Hi Brent, in your senior DBA class, you say that with database mirroring, we either have high availability or disaster recovery, but not both. What if I set up synchronous mirroring to another data center? Why do I not have both HA and DR? Well, Ozan, because you've never actually done that. If you set up synchronous database mirroring going to another data center, your users are gonna gather at the door with pitchforks screaming and yelling because their inserts, updates, and deletes take so long because the latency is so bad to commit to a secondary data center. They're gonna make you turn that off. And the answer is gonna be either you can have a sync mirror in the same data center or you can 
excuse me, have an async mirror in another data center, they're not going to let you do... Am I actually recording? Oh, thank God I am. I just thought, thought I, saw I wasn't recording. Uh, they're not going to let you do both. Uh, we'll do one more. Oh, this is good. How did I get here asks, is there a new version of the SQL Server setup PDF? No. He says the one in the first responder kit goes all the way back to SQL Server 2012. Yeah, I, I, every now and then I think about redoing that. Every now and then I think about updating that to newer versions of SQL Server. And then I go in and I look and my advice is still basically the same. So I think at some point I should freshen it up uh, just to put current dates in there so people don't wonder if it's an old guide or not. But believe it or not, SQL Server hasn't really changed that much for the last 10 years. Now, there are new features always on availability groups, for example. Uh, things have changed in the cloud, but the mechanics of how you set up SQL Server is still really the same. There are some database level features that I think people should turn on by default. A good example for that is RCSI. But I think that you should only turn those on when you're building a new application, not just because you're hosting the same old database uh, uh, that hasn't changed. Well, all right. Well, there we go for today's office hours, just barely north of the Arctic Circle. Uh, today we're sailing up along the coast of Norway. I can't remember the names of the cities uh, and uh, I don't even have any plans on this cruise I'm not doing any excursions I'm just basically sitting uh, in the hot tubs and watching the world go by uh, I get off at each port and I kind of walk around a little bit just to stretch my legs but otherwise I'm just chilling out on the boat so I will see y'all at the next office hours adios